This brief video will discuss uranema, suitable treatment options, and what to do if your display tank becomes infected with uranema. Uranema is very similar to Brooklynella in that it has a direct life cycle, meaning the parasites live, feed, and reproduce directly on the fish. There is no insisted stage like there is with marine ick and velvet. Transmission can occur through direct contact with an infected fish or when parasites inadvertently dislodge and are found in the water column, substrate, or rock. Uranema primarily afflicts chromis damsels, but other genera of fish can also be infected, as we will discuss in the next slide. Initial signs of uranema will often look like a white patch or blotch on the fish, as seen in the left photo. These patches will develop into red sores, as seen in the center photo, until the fish is then covered in them, as seen in the right photo. Another telltale sign of uranema is when the fish's mouth appears to be stuck open, as seen in the right photo. Can fish other than chromis damsels get uranema? If the parasite load in the aquarium is high enough, they sure can. In order of susceptibility, antheas, butterfly fish, and angels are other fish that are generally known to be impacted by uranema. We have also seen it afflict the gills of tangs, basslets, and other non-susceptible fish. If you have a microscope, you can take skin scrapes or gill clippings to confirm your anema. Keep in mind that sometimes the parasites are only found in the gills if the fish's body looks clear. As you're watching this video, please keep in mind two important caveats regarding your anema. Number one, it can spread inside of a fish via intracellular transmission. This is what makes uranema probably the most difficult fish parasite to completely eliminate. And number two, if a fish with uranema infects your display tank, going fallow or fishless will not get rid of it. Uranema can subsist off bacteria, dead tissue, and detritus. Most fish seem protected from it via their natural immune system, but it would be wise to avoid stocking chromis and other susceptible fish if you know that your display tank has uranema. Probably the best way to manage its presence is to maintain a very clean aquarium with minimal detritus for it to feed upon. However, the only way to completely rid an aquarium of uranema in most cases is to sterilize it and start over. If a fish is suspected of having uranema, then it is absolutely imperative to give the infected specimen a bath or dip to knock off some of the parasites before the fish ever enters quarantine. A 45 to 60 minute formalin bath is the preferred route to take. However, a 30 minute peroxide bath also has efficacy. Just bear in mind that once a fish is showing red sores, both formalin and peroxide will burn these. So in that case, the only suitable means for providing temporary relief would be a 90-minute bath using Ruby Reef Rally or a 5-minute freshwater dip. Since uranema is unlikely to be completely eliminated just by doing a bath or dip, we advise doing follow-up treatment in a quarantine tank. For uranema, this can be accomplished by dosing metronidazole every 24 hours for 10 to 14 days or with a single dosage of chloroquine phosphate at 60 to 80 milligrams per gallon. Please note that copper-based treatments are not effective against uranema. Also, since uranema can spread internally, we advise feeding food laced with metronidazole for 10 to 14 days, regardless of whatever drug you're dosing the water with. More detailed information on all of these treatments can be found on our humble.fish website and forum. In conclusion, we'd like to briefly touch upon some experimental treatments which are currently being employed against uranema. These experiments are primarily being done by Chris at Ethical Aquatics, the only Humble.Fish approved quarantine vendor for Canada. After reading a peer-reviewed article about using tea tree oil for treating uranema, Chris has had success in actually reversing open red sores on chromis damsels by dosing the following daily. 25 milligrams per gallon of metronidazole plus 0.1 milliliters per gallon of formalin plus a few drops of tea tree oil. 
In the future, Chris plans on running a batch of incoming chromis through a tea tree oil bath for 30 minutes. The dosage used will be 0.1 milliliters per gallon or 4 drops per gallon of 100% tea tree oil. Thank you for watching this video. See links in the comment section for more detailed information and join us on our humble.fish forum for all reef aquarium related discussions.